In this video, we're going to take a look at a blue black ink by Mont Blanc, their Midnight Blue. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also down in the description is a link to the blue black playlist, so if you wanted to find more of them, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, spread, halo sheen. We do get shading in the extra fine and in the medium. Now the extra fine's quite a bit lighter than the stub and the medium's a little bit lighter than the extra fine. The extra fine took eight seconds to dry while the medium took 13. Scrubby for both show great color variation and it does show it in the writing and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Conklin word gauge with a fine nib was inked up, used for day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, some real uh, tone variation where the extra fine's a lot lighter than the stub. The medium is just a tad darker than the extra fine. The extra fine took 12 seconds to dry while the medium took 19. The scrubbies show a tiny bit of color variation, but I don't really see it in the writing. The smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And you see the green forming at a line on the bottom and moving only a little bit up. And then we get this darker blue, but it's there and pushing all the way up. Now the one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water. The green does not budge but also very noticeable, most of that blue really stays in place. So we can expect a lot of resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, that's not a bleed spot, that's me being sloppy. No ghosting. <clears throat> We get no feather, spread, halo sheen. We do get little bits of shading in the extra fine, not a whole lot. It's a whole lot lighter than the stub. The medium is about the same tone as the stub. While the stub had no shading, the medium has definite light spots throughout it. So it's peppering in shading in the opposite direction. Instead of going darker, it's got much lighter spots in it. The extra fine took nine seconds to dry while the medium took nine. The scrubby for both do show some color variation, though it's really not there in the extra fine. And in the medium, it's only a little bit. The smear test says you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, you have no worries using this in a note-taking situation because it did not budge. Water only moved a little bit of the blue, but most of that blue and all of that green stayed. You can see the green lean in what's left. Pen flush is starting to show some of the white of the paper coming through, so it's really breaking this ink down a whole lot. One-third bleach solution, while it completely removes it, does discolor the paper a little bit. It only took water to get this out of the pen. That's kind of what you expect from Mont Blanc. The next writing sample is done on Loistrum 1917 paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade for the stub, no shade for the medium. The extra fine has spots throughout. I'm gonna say enough spots to really be able to enjoy it. The extra fine's a lot lighter than the stub and the medium is quite a bit darker than the stub. The extra fine took five seconds to dry while the medium took eight. Scrubby of the medium shows no color variation. There really wasn't none. Medium or extra fine shows some and there is enough there to say it has shading. The smear test, I don't know that you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. 
For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Mont Blanc's Midnight Blue has a viscosity of 3.18, so this is a pretty dry ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity test and all that's done, then down in the description is a link to that video. The next writing sample is done on a composition notebook like you would have used in your science lab class. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, very light spots of shading in the extra fine, which is a whole lot lighter than the medium was. The extra fine took four seconds to dry. The scrubby shows the color variation that we should get more of here. And the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Makes it a great combination here. For the inks tested, the average dry time is 17 seconds, and the realm of normal is 13 to 21 seconds. Mont Blanc's Midnight Blue has an average dry time of 11 seconds, so it's a fast drying ink. The last writing sample is done on 28 pound copy paper. We do get a few spots that bleed a little deeper in. Nothing, it's just there. They have no real ghosting. We're nowhere near touching the page underneath, so it's doing very well. We get no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine's a lot lighter than that medium is. It only took a second to dry. It's scrubby said we should get some color variation, though we don't. And the smear test, you can't smear it, so don't worry about it. Instead of finding inks that look like Mont Blanc's Midnight Blue, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a pink ink by Robert Oster, their Cherry Blossom. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to different color playlists. So what do I think of Mont Blanc's Midnight Blue? It's a really good blue-black. As the tone goes from a nice blue to a dark, almost black, it's so nice. It is just resistant enough to not worry about spilling your coffee on your paper. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? It looked standout awesome from a dry fine when I was taking the notes. That Conklin word gauge, it's a dry fine writing and it looked great. I really preferred it there as opposed to the writing samples in what I was seeing. So the right pen makes all the difference. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video we're going to take a look at Diamine's Magenta Flash, a shimmering ink. Again.